All right. What is up, traders? What's up, tycoons? Super excited for today's video. We've got to talk about NVIDIA. Now, whether you believe it or not, NVIDIA has actually not been this cheap. You heard me right, this cheap since January of 2023. And I'm going to show you guys that right away, right? We're going to jump straight into the video, head on over to TradingView. And we're speaking from a valuation standpoint. We're talking about the price to earnings ratio. Take a look at where the highs were in November of 2021 when NVIDIA topped out before having a tremendous crash. The PE ratio was right here, okay, right around 104, close to 105. That was the price to earnings ratio. And it traded below there, you know, throughout the entire bear market. And at the end of January, January 30th was the last day that NVIDIA was trading this low as on a PE ratio. Ever since February has started, since the end of January, NVIDIA's PE ratio has been going up and we've actually seen it drop back down due to its recent earnings, okay, and how, you know, amazing its earnings was. We've, we're actually seeing it back at the previous cycle highs, okay, and also, you know, back at those levels that we haven't seen since January. So we need to dive into the charts a little bit more and really talk about what we're seeing here in the chart. So, um, you know, you can see there's a series of blue lines here. All right, these are gonna be all anchored VWAPs, anchored to the most recent earnings reports. Okay, we're gonna take this one off of here um, because this was our previous all-time high. All right, and we're just gonna have them anchored to the earnings reports, right? The last three earnings reports, these are anchored VWAPs, and you can see we're trading above them. So, you know, there is a giant gap down to fill from its recent earnings. There's also a much smaller gap down to fill from its recent earnings. It's very possible that these gaps fill, okay? But there's a lot of momentum behind this stock. And, you know, by the end of the year or, you know, later into 2024, I think that it's very possible we could see NVIDIA in the 600s, right? Uh, right around 607 is going to be, uh, you know, the final bullish price target. I will, you know, once we hit up to those levels, we'll reevaluate. But you can see after breaking its previous all-time highs, we came right up here to the 1272 extension, all right? And we hit that level. And now we're testing our previous level of resistance, right? The previous all-time highs as support. So we're going to see, you know, can NVIDIA consolidate in here? get another push to the upside you know if we break down uh to the downside and we break below this 484 level okay it's very possible that you know we see nvidia come here and fill this first gap down uh that's going to be right around where the anchored vwap is from the last earnings right you can see here if we were to just draw a little box and extend it out you know that's right around where that anchored vwap is and this is going to slowly gravitate more so i wouldn't be surprised you know if we do break through that 484 area and we come down, this is going to be an area, okay, right in here, right around 440, where there's potentially going to be a lot of buyers stepping in, right? I mean, this is the stock that everyone is chasing right now, people that don't even know about the stock market and are just wondering what to get into. Um, you know, this is a stock that they're looking at. And as I showed you guys in the beginning of the video, NVIDIA, whether you believe it or not, even though the price has gone up tremendously from a valuation standpoint, it really hasn't been this cheap in a very long time. And so that's going to attract a lot of investors. Um, now, not only does NVIDIA look bullish, right? We have some of its competitors here. You know, they also look good, right? I mean, AMD, um, if you've been following the channel, we talked about AMD having this giant cup and handle forming here. Um, you know, and so this is our cup right here, right? And we talked about getting an ABC correction to the downside. We actually bounced right off of the golden pocket area here, right around the 61.8% retracement level of 101. And you can see we're starting to rebound. So the big question for, you know, a lot of these stocks is, you know, September seasonality is coming and people really want to know, you know, is it potentially going to be a really bad, you know, time for the market? If it is, uh, then it's very possible stocks like AMD and NVIDIA are going to, you know, get hit and come down lower, right? But we know some of the levels where key buyers are going to step in at, right? We talked about 440, 444 and NVIDIA uh, for AMD. If we break below that 101 area, we have 9344. That's also going to be another big area, right? After completing our five wave move to the upside, it makes a lot of sense we get an ABC correction. All right, if we just simply go to a weekly chart, you can see the structure that we have here, All right? Um, you know, from a much more macro standpoint, you know, when you look, we got our wave one up here, okay? And then we got a wave two retracement, we got a wave three up, wave four down, wave five, and then we got an ABC to the downside. And this one, two, three, four, five up that we talked about, that's our wave one of the super cycle, right? And then we're getting an ABC for our wave two of this super cycle. And we're just seeing, you know, is it potentially, is the wave two potentially complete here? 
right? Did we potentially, you know, put in the bottom for this wave two of the super cycle with our C wave right around that 61.8 extension? If not, you know, we can drop lower to 93.44. But again, all of that, you know, lines up perfectly with the handle part of this, you know, big old cup and handle forming. And ultimately, once AMD breaks past 133, um, you know, I think it's very possible that it comes back to retest its previous highs right around to the 150, 145 area. All right. And if we go back to uh, NVIDIA again real quick and just take a look at, you know, what are some of the signals that we're seeing on the NVIDIA chart? We'll go back to a daily time frame. Um, you know, we've got this bearish divergence here on our RSI, right? So if you're not familiar with bearish divergence, it's a simple, it's something that happens when price action is making higher highs. So if we take a look here, we can see that, you know, we have, um, you know, highs here. Right. We have highs here and then we also have new highs up here. And what are we seeing on the RSI? Well, at those same exact points on the chart, we're seeing a high, we're seeing a lower high and we're seeing a lower high. So this is what's known as a bearish divergence because price action is going higher. The RSI is going lower, making lower highs. And this is an indicator you could see some type of bearish activity. Now, a lot of people would tell you that this is going to cause a massive crash in the stock. Now, it's very possible, right? The bearish divergence could lead us to come here and fill this big old juicy gap we have to the downside. But what a lot of people don't understand is you can also use these bearish divergences to look for breakouts to the upside, right? If we break out of this bearish divergence trend line and retest that line and push higher, or even if we just trade sideways, um, you know, that's going to coincide with price action actually breaking out to the upside as well. And that could take us to some of our first two bullish price targets here of 502.64 and then 529.57. So you want to pay close attention um, to this bearish divergence trend line here. Um, and then, you know, you can see that also coincides a little bit with the MACD. Uh, the MACD is, is more of a lagging indicator. So you have your uh, RSI is going to be more of a leading indicator. Uh, and then the MACD is going to be a lagging indicator, kind of tell you what's happened after it's already happened. Uh, and so you can see here, initially, we're building that bearish divergence, right? We have the high here, lower high here. Here we have a high, higher high. All right, bearish divergence, and then we get that MACD crossover. Uh, but what do we do? We end up pushing back up higher, right? And then we come over, create another bearish divergence, get the MACD crossover here. We pull back again. All right, and now we're looking to see, you know, is this rejection here on the RSI bearish divergence trend line going to be followed by a MACD crossover to the downside? Uh, if so, then that's when we could potentially be getting this gap fill here and maybe even the larger gap fill over here. Uh, but if not, and we get a breakout to the upside of that bearish divergence trend line, then it's very possible we see the MACD white line stay ab up above the red line, and that's going to indicate bullish momentum. So let me know your thoughts on NVIDIA down below. All right, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. I also just started a completely free newsletter for you guys. Uh, it gives out free trade ideas every single week and goes over valuable content. There's a link in the description as well as a comment section down below. Uh, there's also a website associated with it. So you can actually go back and read some of the previous newsletters, uh, puts it out in kind of a blog style. Um, but we talk about really good things in here, things that you're going to want to know if you're new to the stock market or whether you've already been in the stock market for a while. Um, you know, there's going to be some great content in here and some really good investment intelligence, as well as some different trade ideas that you guys can look at exploring, um, you know, throughout your experience in your journey. So Sign up for that link in the description or in the comment section and I'm out.